It's all about preliminary final moments this morning and we're not going to look at the ones that you know. So not the 99 preliminary final and we're not the plug-up point. We wanted to go to places that you go, oh, I can't, can't remember that vision. So we're going to start in 1981. Collingwood uh, were playing uh, Geelong and this is Peter Dacos, which he says he regards as his best ever goal. Peter Dacos because it was in such a big game. Uh, you see his boys do it time and time again. But there's Dakes. They uh, kicked four on the day and they went on and played Carlton in a losing grand final the week after. But what a marvel that man was. He was. Got his uh, premiership in 1990. Uh, Brownie, you won't like uh, reliving this one. 1997, the famous Adelaide Crows v Bulldogs consecutive prelim finals. And this uh, famous moment, Liberatore, who still to this day feels that was a goal and may have put them to a point where they could not have been caught. The Early Bulldogs. last quarter. And then Darren Jarman uh, was famous what he did in the uh, last quarters of grand finals. He was equally good yeah. in the last quarters of prelim yeah. finals at that punt road end of the MCG. He, uh, he turned it on in that game, he turned it on the next week, and he did it all again the very next year. I'm talking about moments of the Giants haunting and Carlton haunting, and that one still haunts you. Think about it, think about what if, and I fumbled one at the top of the goal square. I always think about it. Mm. Yeah, you do. It stays with you for a long time. That, that's the heartbreak of finals. Uh, speaking of which, the wizard, Jeff Farmer, didn't he turn it on? Let's go back to 2000 and the D's taking on North Melbourne in this night game. And at his absolute peak, he was unstoppable, really. He had some big quarters, the wizard, but yeah, unstoppable there and sent the D's through to their first grand final since 1988 to take on Lordo's mob the week after. But in terms of a highlights package, you will see none better than that man, the Wizard. He was a player that uh, always got the crowd involved as well. And when you needed a lift, he was there to provide it. Let me ask you, Modra v Farmer? Nah, well, I'm a Tony Modra. Yeah. Uh, I'm obsessed by Tony Modra. So, so and, and Modra? Di different players, but... There were some big bombs in preliminary finals, so let's get into it. Gary Lyon, have a look at this, in the wet against the Blues. Uh, 80 metres, maybe. A very skinny Gary Lyon, early days there. But have a look at this. This is in the wet. And that is inside oh. the centre square, gets onto it, oh. and it gets over the back oh. of the pack for Gaz. Gaddy! And he'll come up again uh, in Meteoroka soon <laughs> enough. <laughs> and this one, Anthony Rocket, a 70 metre top. So he marks it at about 60 on Nigel Smart there. Have a look at the score. Uh, only eight points in front, but he goes back and goes Maybe bang. 12. And, uh, to Maybe make 12. the first grand final in 12. So inside the square as well. Make it 12, Damo. That goes out to 18. <laughs> yeah. um, Unbelievable. He was a big kick. So too was his brother. Oh. Yeah. All righty. Now, uh, I just need your help with this one, Kane, because yep. in 2004, you were playing St Kilda in a prelim. Gavin Wanganeen, the Brownlow medalist. Hadn't uh, touched the ball, TJ. Yeah. But in the last quarter, what happened? So at half time, he hadn't touched the footy. And he was a player, he was the coach's pet, as, <laughs> as there is. And it, I've never seen him cop a spray or any choice from words. From Choco? From Choco. They let him do no pre-season. He did his own sort of thing. <laughs> That's how good he was. But at half time, he hadn't touched it. And Choco absolutely gave it to him. Uh, as ferocious a spray as you were going to see and then he came out and did this so have a look at this this was uh, absolute heartbreak for St Kilda yeah look at the score how many is that the difference there Nathan it's one okay thank <laughs> you for that and uh, whatever Choco said to him and you know what he said Kane uh, it obviously had the desired effect because he took it upon himself and off his own boot to actually put the result beyond doubt in the end it's just an unbelievable footballer whatever position forward won a brown though at, in the back pocket but could go on ball could play wing and stood up in those moments and this tackle here also from Sean Berger there, the smother, and that from Chad not giving away a free kick. Well, I think Fraser Gehrig actually kicked his 100th goal, and there's you. It's all about you, Kane, isn't it? <laughs> well, no, but it was a good. It was a big relief, as you can see. Did Barry Hall just hit you then, or <laughs> it was no. a relief? And then Robert Harvey. I mean, that's you feel for what a player he Who'd was. Who'd you play on that game? I played on Nick Del Santo. Yeah. Started, yeah. Take his, get him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in 2009, uh, Nick Revolt was at the peak of his powers. They'll play in the Western Bulldogs. Look how tight this one is. Minute to go. They're up by one point, St Kilda. And Nick Revolt kicks a fantastic goal. But imagine if we had goal line technology and we could review. Have a look at this vision that Luke Jackson, our guru upstairs, Dogsy, has found. Watch the fingers bend back. Oh, you're kidding. So would have given uh, the dogs a chance to get a kick in with a minute 15 to go. But they won and uh, had an epic grand final the week after where they lost. But uh, a sensational prelim. Poor Jono slumped to the ground there. <laughs> Let's go to 2013, the uh, Hawks v Cats. And it required Sean Burgoyne to step up and kick three goals in the final quarter after his team, Hawthorne, were trailing at 
three-quarter time. It was all part of the, the infamous Kennett curse uh, situation and time. He was clutch, wasn't he, Dave? He was. He was. He had big moments, oh. like Scott Pendlebury, at big stages. And, yeah, without him, they weren't getting into this particular grand final. And then that was the one that they needed to just make and then win. They won 13, 14 and 15. But prior to that game and even that moment, they'd lost the 2012 grand final. And at that stage, <laughs> at this very moment, they had only got the one premiership out of this great era. I'm not entirely sure Andrew Mackey would be enjoying those highlights. Not that big, no. Yeah. No. But who's now head of football, by the way? Which mm-hmm. The Cats, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Kano? Oh, that's me, Lordo. Yeah, 2016. This is one of the better prelim finals that I've ever seen. I mean, when, when the dogs came from nowhere to do this, look at Bontempelli here. If this is the one we're going to see, a young Marcus Bontempelli, the composure to gather this ball, to steady yourself. He knows the pressure's coming, but he just absorbed it and went bang straight through the middle. This was electric, this game of footy. They had mm. some big performers. I thought Liam Pickham during this final series was enormous. You know, these unheralded players. There's McRae there. You can see Tony. Mm. celebrating. Look, five-point victory and they go on to win the most unlikely of premiership. Was it the first year that there was a week off before? Yes, that was the very first which year. Which allowed them to get some key players back yeah. before the start of that final yeah, series. It changed the way the they final system worked. They got smashed in the last round, I think, by about eight goals yeah. over in Perth. Had to travel back to Perth mm. in the first week of the finals and they got the job done. It was only four years ago that the Giants beat Collingwood in an epic preliminary final and I love looking at some of the names for the Giants that were playing. That was Bobby Hill who just handballed the footy and there's some guys playing for different Brent clubs. Brent Daniels is still doing what he's doing. Uh, this was just a fantastic game of football. You see... In Toronto. Uh, uh, what's his Williams. Name? Williams. Williams. Yeah, players now. Carl, Carl. Timmy Taranto. Uh, Himmelberg still there but Hopper. playing as a forward. Hopper uh, is involved there uh, playing. Uh, big goal here. Timmy Taranto gets it forward. So Put some 16 points up in the wet. This was a game Brody Grundy dominated, but Finlayson, he kicks on. So Brody Grundy dominated, but didn't get anything for his hit out, says big Phil Davis. Tomlinson's playing for them. And there's Eamon Buchanan giving it to the Collingwood fans at the front. So they got their revenge, the Pies, this weekend. Uh, great stuff, Lordo. Uh, it's been a terrific year for Deep Dive. And, uh, well, next week, what, what do you do next week? Uh, I'll put it in the hands of dogs. But grand final moments, I'm sure, will right. uh, we'll get us through. All right, do you reckon you might feature in that? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I haven't stuck myself in for a while, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay.